It's projected by the year 2025 that some 60% of the world's landmass and billions of people will find themselves in a water-scarce situation. At a minimum, the world will face economic challenges from this water scarcity. At a maximum, the world will face a grave humanitarian crisis. Hundreds of millions of people suddenly find themselves in places where there once was water, but there no longer is. And therefore, I became concerned about what this would mean for the world at large. I began looking into it, and to my amazement, I discovered that a little country, a very dry country, in the middle of the driest region of the world, had the answers and the solutions to an ever drier world. That country, a country that is 60% desert, is Israel. Sometimes I'm asked, what is the one great part of the Israel water equation? And the answer really isn't that it is only one great thing, but that it's many important things. Israel has a multifaceted kind of all of the above strategy where they think that there are many techniques that are valuable. And so it's everything from good governance and smart pricing and smart technology and encouraging conservation and constantly encouraging new and better approaches to agriculture, which consumes large amounts of water, constantly challenging itself to make better use of its water in homes and cities. And all of that together has led to a better water story for Israel and soon, I think, for the world. And it's not a surprise that it is drip irrigation that comes out of Israel or that desalination has made rapid advances in the drop of the price of desalinated water out of Israel. And it's not a surprise that Israel leads the world by a very large margin in the reuse of treated wastewater. Today around the world, 150 countries have some form of engagement with Israel over water. And that's a remarkable number because there aren't 150 countries with which Israel has diplomatic or commercial relations. Water is a way of engaging others. It's a pathway to peace. In March of 2014, the drought in California grew so severe that California Governor Jerry Brown invited the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, to come to California to enter into a formal memorandum of understanding in which Israel and California would work together to try to solve severe problems of California and most particularly in the area of water scarcity. That same type of cooperation now is going on in state after state in the United States, Colorado and Nevada and many others. Although India famously, at least in the West, is thought of as having massive amounts of water because of the annual monsoon, in fact, the monsoon falls very quickly in a short period of time. It's hard to capture all of that water and most of it runs off. And so what Israel is helping India to do through the drip irrigation miracle invented in Israel is to find a way to get larger crop yields with actually less water than they've ever used before. For many years, many, many years, Israel has sent hydrologists and agriculturalists to Egypt, to Jordan, and to other countries to assist them in getting the highest yield for the use of water that they have. It's not widely known, but Israel provides the Palestinian Authority with 55% of the water that it uses in the West Bank and a significant amount of water in Gaza as well. Israel had an open door policy for Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, engineers, water administrators from these territories to come into Israel for five and six day seminars where they would be taught, usually in Arabic, by Israeli uh, agriculturalists and Israeli water scientists on the very best practices that they could take back to their home communities. As Africa rises in its development scale, it will need ever greater amounts of water. And here too, Israel has been a great partner to many, mostly sub-Saharan African nations. It has sent people into Africa to help train them on how to get the highest yield per unit of water. Little by little, these Israeli programs in sub-Saharan Africa have had a profound impact on the lives of really millions of Africans. South America is thought of as a place of enormous water resources, but it is a common misunderstanding that just because a place has a lot of water means that the water is where the people need it. So for example, in Brazil, the country of the Amazon, the mighty Amazon, the largest source of fresh water in the world. The problem is that just a few hundred miles away in Sao Paulo area, a state that represents about 40 million people, they have water scarcity that is profound and deep. Israel can help them as well in figuring out ways of tr training people in conservation 
and making the highest best use of the water that they have. And that's fortunate because now the world was, is now going into a situation very similar to what Israel has experienced, but Israel has prepared itself for it. And now the world doesn't have to spend decades doing what Israel did, but simply has to learn from Israel and to adapt those techniques and technologies and practices. Israel is a friend, a partner, and a solution in country after country, region after region.